Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be telling you the story about how I spent $5,500 at a convention buying books that were restored, trimmed, multiple staples, basically Frankenstein books, and how I got my money back from the dealers that sold them to me. If this story seems familiar to some of my longtime viewers, it's because it is. But when I made that video, I didn't tell all of the ins and outs and what happened in that story, how I got my money back, what happened. For all you new people out there, I bought $5,500 worth of raw comic books from these dealers at, a, at the Huntington Comic Con in Huntington, West Virginia. So what I'm going to show you guys is some footage of the convention, show you some close-ups of the books, and then explain to you what happened. All right, so several of these keys I was looking at uh, were raw, but some of them were graded. When I came to this guy's booth, this was the best booth at this Huntington Comic Con. The first thing I'm looking at is multiple copies of this House of Secrets 92. My first mistake when I purchased these books was I did not take them out of the bag. But if you also look closely on the back of these books, there were no details, there were no explanations, there was no... Um, description of any flaws with the book. Next I look at multiple copies of ASM 50. Um, I believe there was four copies in total and looking back on these man I'm kicking myself because these prices were fantastic in comparison to now. This video and all this happened in June and July of 2021. The next book I'm looking at is this Batman 251. And I wish I would have bought that, that, that graded copy. But this is what I'm talking about. When I get back home, this is a Tomb of Dracula 10. And I start seeing this. I start seeing multiple staples in the center fold. I start seeing that the outer cover of this Tomb of Dracula is not even stapled uh, with the original staples to the internal book. The age of the cover is completely different than the age of the book. The staples have a different patina. They look like they're from different ages. It's like this, this cover is married to the, the internal book. And you can see here the staples are just not in the right place. Red flags start going off. This is a clip from the original video I made. Um, I'm sorry it's kind of blurry, but this is the Tomb of Dracula in question. It was a beautiful book. This is the Swamp Thing, uh, uh, House of Secrets 92. This had, I think, three staples. Um, and one of the staples was very, very new. None of that was disclosed on the, uh, the outside of the bag and board. This is a Hulk 340 newsstand. There was nothing wrong with that book. And then this book here, if you look at the top of that, you see the two circles and then the ears on Batman. Batman's ears go way higher up on that book. And then those two circles, uh, the DC and the 20, those are cut. That book has been trimmed all the way through, through the top of the book. This book is significantly shorter than any Bronze Age book from that era. This is the ASM 50. It was just lower grade. There was nothing wrong with it. And then this Batman um, uh, first Riddler, it had a, a hole punched right through the middle. I was aware of all of that uh, when I bought this book. But as far as the trimming, I was not aware of that, and as well as the married cover. So I message the guy that is uh, the, the, the owner of that booth, and I was scared at this point because I thought that I had just bought $5,500 worth of trash. And uh, he and I were very cordial at the convention, but uh, when I sent that email, I was very scared and I basically was threatening him with legal action because if he didn't respond to my email, I was about to get stuck with these books. All right, so from those emails, and, and this is a learning video as well as a uh, cautionary tale. The reason behind this video and the inspiration is another channel that I watch, and, and he posted this video I think about a month or two ago, is Comics with Bonix. He bought a $12,000 ASM number one, CGC graded, and when he got the book, it was not what he thought it was. There was writing on the cover. It didn't present the way he, he thought it did, and he ended up 
uh, getting his money back, sending it back, and, and everything was good. But um, I was just recounting my tale. And this is really one of the first bad experiences I had at a Comic-Con um, and, and with dealers uh, ever. After I got home and started inspecting the books closer, you know, I was like on a frantic search. Like I was scouring the CGC boards. I was, you know, messaging people in the community. I was like reaching out to all these people like I didn't know. This book legit, like this Tomb of Dracula's got like a married cover. There's extra staples in the Swamp Thing. There's extra staples in this Tomb of Dracula. It's like basically say, hey, is there anybody that's seen anything like this? And I heard mixed things. I heard some people saying, you know, that's not a... That, that happens, you know, that's an uh, that's not an uncommon thing. Um, I, I just didn't believe it. And, and talking to the guy that owned the books, you know, he was, he was like, you know, these were from a personal collection, yada, yada, yada. Like, I, I know where all these books come from. Obviously, protecting, you know, his butt, protecting his, his inventory. But... At the end of the day, you don't know where these books come from unless you bought them off the newsstand in 1970, whatever. You don't know who's had these books, what's been done to these books. And it was just too much of a risk. It was too much like to send that in and it get like a purple label or a green label or, or whatever. And after having spent that much money, I couldn't, I couldn't accept that. I had to do something. When I sent that, those emails, you know, looking back on it, I, I probably should have handled that a little bit better, a little bit more tact, but I was scared. And I didn't know whether that email that uh, I had of his, which all I had was the PayPal email. I had no way of contacting these guys about these books other than that email. And I didn't want that email to be just disregarded and just, you know, blown off like, hey, you bought, you bought crap, uh, I got gotcha. you. And I should have communicated better. Um, yeah, so let me just put that out there. But he and I go back and forth with the emails. Um, and uh, he, he's very condescending in some of the emails. And, and I'm angry in the emails. It, it's, a, it's a stressful situation. I mean, it's $5,500. And the guy is a physician. He's a medical doctor, as you can see in uh, some of the emails and he he kind of patronizes me in a couple situations talking about you know calling me doctor and stuff and it just really rubbed me the wrong way but anyway I basically we get down to the nitty-gritty of like what, what are we going to do about this and we end up saying that we are going to meet up in Ashland Kentucky uh, which is the the shop of the guy that puts on the um, convention, this this Huntington Comic Con, and he was going to send his associates there, and um, he was basically going to take the books back, and I was going to get the fifty five hundred dollars back in my PayPal. You know, I I mean I'm I don't know what's going to happen. Are they going to actually do it? I I drive the two and a half hours for me to get to this place. And uh, it's raining. So it's pouring rain when I get there. And we get, I get there and from, I know from the, the shot, I, I kind of blurred out the face, not blurred out the face, but this just didn't show you the, the, these guys because I, I don't, I'm not trying to blast these guys anymore. Again, this is a cautionary tale. But these dudes were huge. Like, I mean, I'm like 175 pounds, 5'10". These dudes were like, 300 pounders, like six foot. They were giant men. And we're huddled around my uh, vehicle with uh, the back propped open, huddled around like looking at these books. And uh, it was just, it was super stressful because, you know, they were super on guard. You know, they were super uh, crass with me, just, you know, picking apart the things. And like, how do we know that these are the books that, we actually sold you. How do we know? Because because a couple of them were not in their uh, original bags and boards that I bought them in. I took them out because I just didn't like how they presented. 
and uh, they were basically scrutinizing these, like hovering over these. But uh, long story short, they took them, and we did the dirty deal in the uh, in the parking lot of the Inner Geek in Ashland, Kentucky. But it was not a good experience. I don't recommend that to anybody. Um, and honestly, this is a main reason why I don't buy especially Silver Age books raw at conventions where, I mean, I know you can look at the book and, and see the book. It's just, you can't, it's hard to tell if something is trimmed. It's hard to tell if something's color touched. It's just, I just would prefer to spend the extra money on a CGC slab that I know is a blue label and just, just be done with it. And the other lesson from this is even in a stressful situation, even in a, in a scary situation where you got a lot of money tied up, just handle things better. I definitely learned from this as far as, um, you know, how to, how to handle yourself a little bit better. Um, but it was, it was a scary situation and I, I'm interested to see what you guys would have done in that same situation. Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If any point in time you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Take care.